Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode for the STM32 tutorial. And this is a preparation episode where we are going to take a look on the bit manipulation. So I will start with explaining why I'm going this practical uh, episode regarding the bit manipulation. Then we will go through really basic stuff uh, regarding bit operations, but I will give you some tricks and some ways to make it very efficient. And slowly we will get a little bit more uh, a more complicated code until at the end we reach the bit mask, which will be a way to, to play with um, registers or the microcontroller by the end. So for our test today, we are going to use the board, which is called the black pill. And our MCU is the STM32 F411. This is a really small um, board that like you see here. And we are going to play with these LEDs. So that's why we are going to be practical. Okay, so let's uh, jump to a little bit about how to be practical. So usually when you get introduced to a uh, bit uh, and binary numbers, you get those kind of tables like going from like 0 to 15 and how you convert a bit to like a binary number to a decimal number. Actually, this is completely useless in what we are going to do because um, there is no meaning, meaning just converting those numbers and trying to understand them, at least for the microcontroller world. So from our perspective and approach, this way will, will not be used at all. So in the other hand, what we will need to understand is how we will play with memory registers manipulation. We will see this one in great details when we will start um, really playing with the microcontroller. But just to, to give you an, a, a small a heads up on this one, because the registers are really very fast memories that are near the CPU and they either can access quite directly. So that's using bit operation with registers allow the CPU to be very fast. So that's why it's one of the convenient things to use the um, bit operations. And on the other hand, this is the um, register. And just imagine a register, it's a memory location within your microcontroller, just a memory place. And this register, which is called the GPIO, General Purpose Input Output Ports, um, data register. And this register, by playing with it, we will be able to control the pin status on or off, okay, or high or low. So let's go now and start our first step and just to be careful about the equal sign. So let's bring here uh, the, the, the code and let's start going through it. So we do have our program here and the first thing we are going to do, just a quick introduction to the program. So first of all, there is a, a function uh, called important setup to make pin ready. So um, there is some important setup and I don't want you to worry about this step for the moment because this is um, that's something detailed that we'll see later. But we are preparing our pin so we can play with them. And on the other hand, I'm preparing this variable called my byte. And as you can see, I'm using a char. And this is for like especially for some obscure reason. And this one, like I will explain in a few next episodes, you understand why I'm using char, not an int. Okay, so we are setting up this unsigned char, what I call my byte, and I will be putting, and this is how you declare a byte a number. So your compiler will understand you are using a byte, not a decimal number. So by adding 0b, and at the end, I'm putting u as unsigned. But this u is not necessary here, but just for you to know um, that this is for unsigned. Okay, so we are going to start a little by little and to go through the steps of this program, as we have seen in the previous video, we are going to the debug mode. Okay, so now we go to the debug mode and we are going to start going line by line. And as you can see right now, all the pins are off and we are going to play with them a little by little. So let's move step by step. So we declared our byte here with this value and what will happen is if I go to this register and just see it like this so we do have this byte with having 
eight ones. Okay, and now by executing this step, what will happen is each time we do have one at uh, the location, like this is location zero and this is location seven. And by putting equal, it just I'm saying to this register here that I would like to have at the location um, zero a one until the location seven. So what will happen is my LEDs will turn on when I execute this one because they have one in their location. So let's go and check. And you see, voila, all our LEDs are now on or high. So the next step now, what I have done is giving to my byte a new value. And by putting equal, by putting equal the previous value, which is all ones from the position zero to, to seven, will be replaced by this one. So if I put and I go to the next step, what will happen? The bits or the um, pins will be high, same as the value I have set up. So now let's change the value again. And this one, as you can see, is the, the opposite. So let's go and put it. And we do have all the yellow pins turning high. Okay. So one important final uh, final remark regarding the bit manipulation. Careful, sometimes you'd like to change only one bit in a certain position. And like by saying, and we will see it in the future, and if you put like equal zero or equal to one, you may delete other pin that you need to preserve. So for example here, so I will be setting up the last pin and the first pin, okay? So if I run this one, so as you can see, the first one, which is the pin number zero is high and the pin number seven, the red one is, is low. But here, let's say I would like to set up to add a one here. If I change, I can change it actually, it's because it's running code inside the microcontroller. This will not happen. And by doing that simple equal, the bit itself that, that will erase the old data in the memory. So careful, sometimes it's important to keep the previous value and just add one bit. And this is what we will see in the next section. Okay, hope this is clear, but if it's not clear enough, please um, ask your question in the comment section, or I would be happy to, 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 to make this one in the, our live session during um, Saturday nights. Okay, so by doing so, we can go to the OR operation. Up to here, it's quite basic. So let's put the whole thing off and start working on our OR operation. So for me, OR, from um, the perspective of bit manipulation, it's like adding a bit, like a bit making a bit high without the possibility of removing it. So as you can see right now, all our bits are off. And by doing this OR operation, as you can see here, which is this kind of a long, uh, like L, um, like look at it in the, your keyboard, depends on where you are in this planet. I struggle a lot in my life with them. So by doing this, and you can see that the pins or the LEDs that I set up uh, at the extremities of uh, my LEDs list are getting high. And this is what I wanted. But the OR, as soon as we put this one, whatever you apply it again, nothing will change. On the other hand, imagine I put the whole thing in zeros. So even with that, the OR doesn't affect at all because we OR only add, doesn't subtract, subtract a value from that. So if I run this one, if I put all zeros or what the value that I do have within my register, what will happen is nothing will change because this is an OR, OR it generously it adds only. On the other hand, here, if I add, instead of the extremities, I'm moving, narrowing my ones here. So I'm putting one here and one here. And if I do it again, you can see that I'm adding new bits. Even though I do have zeros, I had zeros here and here. Another way, so we have been using, like I jumped quickly in, 
in um, in this, the explanation, but you can see here that instead of putting each time this OR, we can reduce the code, and this is really efficient way to write it. You can put OR equal my byte is exactly equal to the same code that we write here. So it's quite just compressing our code and making it more efficient even for reading. So finally, let's put the whole thing high. And just by doing this, we can't use any more OR because all the bits are high, which take us now to the end operation. So let's go to the end operation. So for the end operation, what you are going to do, and it's just removing the bits. It's kind of a, the opposite of generous. I need to, to know it in English, but it's the person that takes only maybe, a, a, I don't know. I, I don't want to say something. So by doing like this, what happened, now I put it, as you can see here, zeros. So the places where I do have a zero will turn off the, the LEDs. So let's run a little bit of code and see what happened. And you see that the boundaries again are getting to zeros because I put it zero in the value of my byte. And this is the way to write it. So this is the values of my register that I put it in the previous um, in the previous um, code. And now we are combining it with my byte. And also, and it's the same thing by putting this, this my byte first and then the register next. It's exactly the same thing. And by running it, nothing changes. Also, AND can be customized, same as OR, and is generated like this. So now, I should narrow further the LEDs that are high. So if I run it, you can see that this is narrowed a little bit. So we do have now a situation where um, we, we can add, we can remove. And that takes us to another operator that I find extremely useful and helpful is the complement operator. This complement is the one that helps you to reverse um, the bit that you do have. So let's jump to the example. So you can see here, before running this um, code or the line 71, what will happen is now everything, all the bytes that you have are now down. So if I run this complement, all of them will turn high. So the complement will just make it the opposite of what we do have. So now in this next example, we took the uh, byte data and we put it here as the 11000011U. So actually what will happen, so everything is high, as you can see in the picture here. By putting this one, what we will have is the two first one and the last um, uh, two ones will get will stay high wherever whatever in the inside will be turned off so let's run this one and you can see that now by using this end we do have this new picture so if we run the complement twice let's see what happened so if i run it once you can see that the inner uh, leds are turned high by the opposite of the previous one, and the out, outer LEDs are turned off. So if I run again, you can see that it's kind of a small game. Okay, then let's go to another, like the final operator that we will see. And with this one, we complete um, almost 60% or 70% of all what you need for bit manipulation is shifting a bit. So let's take here are the bits, so we do have um, here only one bit. The first bit um, or the first pin is turned high. So let's turn the first bit high. And what we will do is each time we are going, because here my byte is 000, 000, 000, 000, 001. We are going to move this byte by one place. Okay, so you can see now that the second uh, LED or the LET at the position one is turned on. And if we do the same operation again, this is not changing what is inside my byte. This is not affecting it by moving. It just says, okay, you take byte, you move it by one and you assign here. So if I push here, this is not changing at all my data because byte is not transformed. So now 
Let's do the operation a few times, but this time on my uh, register, the direction register. So if I run here, you can see the byte is moving to the left again, and it moved quite an, another time to the left. So if we would like to go to the other side, to the right, we just reverse this side. We just reverse this side. And by the way, just the complement you're using the tilt, um, the tilt sign or character. Okay. So we just put less less and we move it like this. So we can move also not only one bit, but um, as much as we want. So let's move it one bit, and then we can also move it two bits. But what happened if I move four bits? And so what will happen is just <coughs> about me. This will get everything to zero because there is nothing else. So at the end, let's take a look to um, the bit mask. So let's say you do have a very important pin, and that's the pin number five. I call it here my super important pin, and that's the pin number five. How can I move this pin in an efficient way? So if I would like each time to set only that pin, that specific pin to high or low without affecting the other one. So to set the pin high, let's use all what we have learned in the first step. So first of all, we are taking this one and we can move it by five steps in to the left. So what happened here is we do have one and then after that you have five zeros. And by doing or, we are just adding this one to that location. So by doing so, you can see that only the pin number five is getting, or the LED number five is getting high or on. And after that, if we would like to get it only that pin low, so what we do is getting here to check. So first of all, we move the pin by five steps. And next to that, what we do is we put the opposite. So what will happen instead of having, and let me write it here. So what, so the one like this, five, will give us, so let's, let me comment this one first. This one will give us a zero, zero, one, and then we do have our four zeros. This is the step one. And what we do next here, so and the second step, by adding the tilt operation, by adding this tilt, this zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero will become totally the opposite. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And the end here will convert in the direction register only the locations where there is zeros. And we do have only the location number 5. Okay? And here we do have all the step ready to control really a specific pin. So using the, all this method, and combining them, we do have the ultimate function of the um, pin, the, the mask for the bit that we need to, to, to use. This can be getting um, very useful when we would like to change registers with a more complicated way. Okay, so now we do have this small code that uses um, all this one to build our small animation. So I will just run it. If you are interested to see how this would be working, you can download the code. It's available on GitHub and you can find the link in the description. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode.